Hey guys, Caleb here. Welcome back to another video. And in this one, we're gonna do something a little weird. I'm going to be sanding and painting camera equipment and even a camera at the end of this video and show you several different ways to make your gear just look cool. Many of you are probably thinking, why? Well, why not? A lot of the stuff I'm gonna show is camera cage mods, and then we'll get to stuff like camera painting, which might not be something you're interested in, but if you have an older camera and you know you're not gonna be selling it, why not make it look amazing? Also keep in mind that a lot of these are really easy to do, and so you don't need a ton of skill to make stuff look really dope. So we're gonna talk about a sanding mod for cages, then we'll get into dry brushing cages and other camera equipment. Finally, we'll end by spray painting my GH5. Let's kick things off by talking about a really easy way to make your camera rigs and gear look super cool, and that's using sandpaper. This trick works with just about any gear that is metal and black. For example, here I have an A7S camera cage, and if you look closely, you'll notice that there's a lot of detail that is silver instead of black, and it looks really worn and heavily used, and you can do this very easily with just a little bit of sandpaper. Simply grab your gear and start scuffing it up, and I recommend just going around the whole thing, and what'll happen as you sand the cage or other things like cheese plates is that the high points or edges will start to lose their paint and expose the aluminum or whatever metal is underneath. You can do this by hand as you see me doing here with pretty much any grit. I used a really aggressive sandpaper for this, but if you have a plug-in or battery-powered orbital sander, this goes so much faster and the same thing applies. Just go around the rig, don't really worry about it, just start sanding it down and you'll start to get this effect. Now you can take it as far as you want, show a lot of bare metal or kind of like I did here, just kind of hit the edges of the cage. And the effect is pretty cool. So here I have both cages side by side, one that has not been modded and the other that has. There's the top of the cage and I really love how the little quarter 20s just take on that ring of silver. Organic shapes like this handle grip also really turned out quite nice. Before we dive into actually painting cameras, I do wanna let you know no one has sponsored this video, including cage companies and paint companies. That said, this video is supported by those of you who have purchased my camera guides and LUTs. Check the links in the description to learn more and thank you guys so much for the support this really does keep sponsors off the channel, so I really appreciate it. Another option is to actually paint your cages. Now you could just use some spray paint and that would be fine, but to add a lot of texture, I recommend trying dry brushing. Here is a cage that I have already done this process to, and as you can see, it looks really cool. It looks kind of like brass and uh, it looks really worn. It's not evenly painted. And this effect is super easy to do with a technique called dry brushing. And dry brushing, in short, is using a dry paintbrush to slowly add layers of paint. And again, it's mainly going to hit the highlights or the high points of your equipment or cage in this case, just like our sanding did. For this cage, I used this simple acrylic paint, applied it to a paintbrush, got most of the paint off of the brush. And this is really important. You're gonna feel like you're taking all the paint away from the brush, but this is what you want. From there, you can just start rubbing the brush all over your cage or whatever you're painting, and it's going to slowly deposit the paint, usually on high points. And so you just keep going around the cage until you get your final effect that you're happy with. I would recommend starting this process on the bottom of your cage or somewhere you're not going to really see it so you can experiment and get comfortable with how much paint needs to be on the brush. Again, you really wanna rub almost all of the paint off the brush, there's still some in there, and then you just kinda of mash the brush all the way around your cage, and it's going to give you a really, really great look and finish. I really enjoyed using something like this gold on top of the black cage, and it kinda of ended up looking more like a bronze or brass color. So keep that in mind, you're going to have a darker color since we're not fully painting the entire cage. Here's some more close-ups of the cage when it was done, and if you look closely, you can and see that again we're not painting the whole cage the low points of the cage are going to remain black while high points and edges are going to take on more color when i finished painting and letting it dry i just left the cage alone but if you wanted to add another layer of protection to keep that finish safe you could use some kind of lacquer or some kind of clear coat over the cage just to ensure that you don't chip off or scrape off that paint. I didn't really care, but you could do that if you wanted to. Next up, we have straight up spray painting your gear. Now this is a lot easier for things like light stands, 
tripods or things like props like this fake red camera in the background that I 3D printed. You can just grab your can of spray paint and just go to town. Don't really care what happens because it's not an actual camera. But I've always loved the look of white cameras. I've seen them with red cameras and others. So I decided to go ahead and try my hand at fully painting a camera from scratch. This involves a lot more work because we need to make sure we don't get paint in certain areas like the sensor. So let's talk about what I learned by going through this process. The first thing I'd recommend you do is plan out your paint job on your camera or whatever you're going to be painting. Mainly you need to think about what you do not want painted on the object. So on this particular GH5, I did not want the dials or the buttons to be painted because I still wanted to read them. Some buttons like this one on the front here and the shutter button, I did decide to go ahead and paint. And then I also needed to take into consideration things like the screen and the eyepiece, which is a really soft rubber that's not going to take paint on well. So we need to mask or just remove those items. So I took off the eyepiece and masked off the actual glass element so that I could add the eyepiece back later when finished. Some things are easy to mask like the display on the rear of the camera. Other things were more tricky like these buttons and especially these wheel dials on the top and back of the camera. For the buttons, I just put down a bunch of masking tape and then used an X-Acto knife to cut around them and then tuck the edges in around the buttons. I used a similar process for the wheels where I cut some tape to perfectly fit in the little grooves around the wheels and then tuck them in. Some things were a lot easier to mask like the joystick on the back where I just made a cylinder out of tape, stuck it in and around the joystick and then pinched it off. Same with the wheels on the top. They were surprisingly easy to mask off by using the same process, kind of making a cylinder and taping all the way around the knob and making sure it was nice and airtight on top. For the sensor, I just used an old lens cap and this actually worked really, really well. You just wanna make sure it's nice and snug on the camera and not very loose because obviously we don't want any paint anywhere near our sensor. Then it was time to paint and this is where I made my first mistake. I did not test the paint before I used it. So this is what I ended up using, a Krylon Fusion all-in-one paint and primer. And I'm pretty good at spray painting things, but I made the huge mistake of not testing it. And as you can see, just by holding this up here, the paint cap on this spray can doesn't really match what ended up being on the camera. So this is more of a cream, not a true white. So definitely test some paints to make sure the color is what you want so that you don't waste a ton of time like I did by doing several coats and realizing in the end that it's really not white. But I ran out of time and had to just keep pushing forward with this video. So I painted the camera. I also painted a cage and a cheese plate that I might build a rig into later. And when it comes to actually painting, there's tons of videos talking about this, but I recommend just keeping the can as far away as possible. Do multiple light coats, follow the instructions on the can. Just don't forget like I did, that you're going to need to move the display around so you can get all the little parts of the hinge and you wanna make sure you get full coverage around the camera so you don't have any shadowy spots once you're done painting. Once everything cured, it was the glorious and terrifying moment of removing the masking tape. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The buttons didn't quite work out perfectly. There's still some paint around the edges. And if I really wanted to, I could go back and use a knife to kind of scrape off the paint. I did that on one button and it worked out fine. The lens cap worked out beautifully as well as things like the display and the joystick on the back and the knobs on top or the mode dials were fine. And all of the ports ended up working great too. One final thing to do on the camera before being done is to make sure you find all the spots where there's little LED lights or IR receivers like on the front of this camera and use a knife to scrape them off so that you still see the power indicators and charge lights and record lights when using the camera. So while not perfect and very cringy for a lot of you probably to watch, I really like how this turned out. I wish it was more white, but it is super unique and you're probably gonna see this camera in a lot of the background of my videos as a prop. And I'm gonna to continue to use it because the GH5 is just a super solid camera even here in 2023. So while none of this information is going to make you a better filmmaker or help your videos look better, there is something to be said for having something that just feels good and makes you happy when you use it. If you take a little more joy out of picking up and looking at your camera, Maybe you'll go out and enjoy filming even that much more. Finally, if you have any painting tips, please leave them in the comments below. I don't think this is the last time 
potentially, unfortunately, that I'm going to be painting a camera or other equipment. So I love feedback. If you are a pro and have tips on what paints to use that are much better, or if I should be doing airbrushing, I would love to hear your feedback. And keep in mind, there are so many different ways to mod your gear without necessarily painting or sanding. For example, there are a ton of skin companies out there where you can buy vinyl wraps for your camera or just do something low destruction like painting a cage that only costs you, you know, 50 to 100 bucks and not a full camera. So that's gonna wrap this one up. I hope you enjoyed it. If you mod your camera gear, please send photos to me on either Instagram or Twitter. I would love to see what you guys come up with. That's gonna wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for watching and for the support. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video.